Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint. Now it's time for our regular introducing feature where we throw the spotlight on an up and coming professional SAA artist who is creating a creative stir. It gives me great pleasure to introduce Warren Seeley, a classically trained painter who studied in both Toronto and Italy. Let's find out a little more about Warren and take a look at him in action. Right, today I want to show you how to paint um, metal objects because I think for beginning painters and intermediates, even advanced painters, um, a texture like metal can seem quite daunting to paint. Um, so I want to show you an effective and very fast way of bringing out a texture like this. And it's done in the reverse way that you might think. Um, as all oil painters know, we work from dark to light, but um, I'm going to show you that sometimes you need to break the rules and in this case do it the complete opposite way that you've probably always been told. So what I'm going to do, rather than painting in my shadows, I've indicated them lightly but they're going to go much darker. I'm going to paint my highlights first and I'm going to plop one about there. I'm not going to do it very carefully. Uh, there and about there. They put on pretty too big, they're bigger than I need. Um, they are not done with any care at all. Uh, one there. And um, I'm going to paint around my highlights. Um, I want to get this brightness first of all, this, this very bright effect that we see. So into my white with a bit of cad yellow and I want to get that brightness straight away. Um, I'm using a photograph today but normally I would do this with the objects um, but just for the the filming and the ease of the, the session today. I'm using um, a photograph, but yeah, I wouldn't normally do that. Um, so, pretty quickly, just paint around that. I'm gonna get oh, this brush. So this is, as I said, this is the backwards way. This is the way you're, you're not really supposed to paint, but it's, um, it really works. Just on metal objects, really, um, you wouldn't do this for anything else, like a highlight on a, on a portrait or something. You wouldn't need to do this. I just want to get this brightness, which is why the highlight's going in first. My highlight is on. And I'm going to try and paint this as quick as possible. There. Into some yellow ochre. Now, that will do for now. Um, let's see. Now, I'm not going to worry about the handle too much. Um, I don't really have time to, to get into that, but I'll just indicate it roughly, just so that there's something there. Okay. I won't, I'll just chuck a few highlights on, but I, I won't really do much more than that. Um, now, we'll paint the um, shadows. Okay, very, very dark shadow. It's probably, in this photograph, it's darker than it probably would be in real life. Um, so we'll get this on. Okay, I forgot my little tone on the spout here. Okay, we get that there. And we'll blend that uh, shadow line in a bit. We don't want that too hard. Um, okay, now I'm going to blend these together and try and pull this together so that it looks like, um, it looks like, it starts to take the look of metal. And I just drag that highlight out. And there'll be some reflection in there. Some reflected light is bouncing into that. Um, bit of reflection in there, I remember. Oh, and I forgot my darks here. Now, we'll run some dark just around here. I don't want to fiddle with this too much.
Right. Now, let's try and blend this a little bit more. Get some more bright tone in there, I think. And okay, if I can pull this highlight out a little bit. And I'll put that highlight back on top. Some real dark accents is what it needs. I wouldn't normally do this this fast. It would generally take a lot longer. Um, but I, I think you can start to see that that shine is starting to come. Um, it just needs a little more finessing, I think. And you see the shine beginning to, to take place. And we can keep loading the highlights. I really want them to jump out and maybe make that reflected light a bit more jumpy. Bit of light in there. I've forgotten the shadow here. So we've got shadow running down here. And then a few accents, a few darks. And that's very quickly. It's, it's kind of crude, but I think you get the idea that by putting the highlights on first, you can kind of get that brightness. And if I had put the, if I painted it in the, in the traditional manner of painting dark to light, and then I put the highlights on top of the other tone, um, I would have really struggled to get that kind of brightness. So um, that's a little technique you can try for painting metal. Thank you. Great talent. I'm sure we'll be hearing lots more from Warren in the very near future. Now it's time for us to unlock the Art Bites archive door. We will delve into the artistic archives to search for an inspirational bite-sized project. Today, contemporary botanical artist, illustrator and tutor Billy Shoal demonstrates how to use watercolour to paint realistic water droplets on a leaf with stunning results. I'm going to show you how to paint a couple of water droplets onto a leaf. I'm going to use this fine, small chisel brush. It's a synthetic chisel, usually used for oil or acrylic painting, and it'll just be a little bit more abrasive than a sable brush. What you want to do is put a droplet of water onto the leaf so you've got something to copy. And I'm going to put one down here, and all I do is just irritate away some of the paint from that part of the petal. A couple of times should do it, just till it's nice and pale. This one's going to be dripping down off the leaf, so it's going to leave a little trail behind it. Then I'm going to put another one over here, just sitting on top. So a couple of little circles, or sort of ellipses there, really. Now let that dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to mix up a very dark green using indigo. Now we can use indigo for this because it's paint on paint, if you like, so we're painting onto a finished painting rather than onto white paper, so indigo is safe to use. So this is cadmium yellow pale and indigo. These are all Windsor and Newton colours. And then I'm going to add just a little touch of cadmium red deep. So the first thing to do is to get the shadow around the base of the water droplet. I'm just going to put a very small outline around the oval that I made. And obviously the intensity of this will depend on how strong the light is. And the light's very strong on this, so I'm now going to just soften around that with the tip of a damp brush. Very gently soften around it so that it gives a softer look to that shadow. And do the same to the other one. 
I'm going to make it a little bit finer on the top and then deeper where it hits the leaf. And I'm going to put a little bit alongside the trail that it's left. And then with the tip of the brush, just soften and sweep that away till it disappears. It's very important at this stage to let that completely dry before you go on to the next stage. So now I'm going to mix up a paler colour. Just take some of that dark mix that you've already got and add some cadmium yellow pale and a little bit of the Windsor Blue Green shade. And where you can see the leaf through the water droplet, we're going to just gradually add a little bit of colour. Now you only need a small dab of it and then very carefully soften it in. So most of the light is hitting on the base of the water droplet. This may vary depending on what you're seeing if you've got a real droplet in front of you. So do be careful to check that yours is the same or if you need to put it in a different position. So I'm going to put some of this brighter colour just back onto that leaf and then soften it away. So I mix up a very, very bright acid green here with some cadmium lemon and Windsor Blue Green shade. I'm just going to put a little touch of that down one side almost like a little band of it. It's very subtle, very difficult to see unless you're up close. Just a little band of green through there and just a hint of green above that one there where it slid down. Just make that a little bit darker. And at this stage, the dark shadow around it can be darkened again. So I'm going to add just a touch more indigo and then very carefully, making sure your brush is nice and smooth, just come right on the edge. So inside of that softened shadow, right on the edge of the droplet to really make it stand out. On this one we'll just do it on this side, very, very fine, just the last hair on the brush there. Then what we do is we let that dry completely, it won't take very long because it's only a small amount of paint, and you need a nice sharp pointed scalpel. And when you're happy that it's totally dry, just check it with your fingertip, then what you do is you pick out a very small highlight. This would be at the top where the light's catching the drip. And I'm going to pick out another little light at the bottom. Just a couple of little flicks. You've got to be absolutely sure that you don't need to put any more paint on before you do this. I'm going to put one more little highlight just above that. There's two lights hitting this one. It's just a quick little flick like that with your blade. Obviously if you paint over this, the paint will sink into the little damage that you've just created and you won't be able to remove it. So it has to be the very, very last thing that you do. And that's it. Join us after the break where we'll catch up with Vic Baycroft as he continues to share his top tips and techniques to show you how to complete the perfect pastel portrait.